Hi guys, my name is Bex and welcome back to my channel and today I'm bringing to you my Owls Wrap Up. The Owls have been and gone and I cannot believe how quickly April went and how many books that I thought I was going to read and didn't. I'm not going to lie to you guys, the struggle was real during the Owls. I picked a quite an ambitious TBR and I didn't get read what I wanted. But these things happen and today I'm here to talk to you about what I did read. But let's jump straight into the stats for April 1st. In the month of April, I ended up reading five books totaling 1,662 pages. So the genre breakup was three fantasy, one historical fiction and one sci-fi. From this, the type of books were one audiobook, two graphic novels, and two physical books. And the star ratings I gave was one three star, two four stars, one 4.5 star and one 5 star. So all in all, I was pretty happy with the books I read this month. The ratings are pretty good. I'm excited to talk to you about my higher rated book. And although originally my TBR had like 10 books on it, I was really stoked that I got through a few of these and one of them, which was a freaking chunker. So without further ado, let's dive in to the books that I read, starting with my least favorite all the way up to my favorite read of April. Starting with my three star read of the month, and that was The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. I was really, really excited to dive into another one of Holly Black's books. I've obviously read The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King, which I adored. So I really wanted to read one of her older novels and see what I thought and if I loved it the same. Obviously, Holly Black writes fate. I really enjoy the way she writes fate, so I was excited to dive into this one. Now, this story follows a little town called Fairfold, where in the center of the forest, there is a glass casket with a sleeping fairy prince. Obviously, he is one of the most fascinating parts about this town of Fairfold, but Hazel and Ben have always dreamed of waking him. But in the darkest part of the forest, you must kind of be careful what you wish for. And this is a story about what happens when he wakes up. And it was interesting, but I was just not gripped by this story very much, unfortunately. The start of this novel really kind of dragged for me and I was really uninterested, but I just kept pushing myself through it and I just didn't connect with the story as much as I did with the rest of Holly Black's writing. I think the world is always built really, really well and Holly Black has a really, really good way of describing the world and making it sound really, really atmospheric, but it wasn't as dark as I expected it to be. Most of Holly Black's writing is always a little bit darker, but this was kind of a little bit eh for me. I think the characters were really good and I think they were developed really well, but it just didn't do anything. It wasn't anything special. It wasn't anything new. It wasn't anything that I could ride home about and be like, oh, this is amazing. Read it. It was just okay. I feel like going into a Hollyback book didn't help me either because I already have such high expectations and this one just didn't hit the mark. Moving on to my four star reads. The first one I'm going to talk to you about is The Woods Volume 1, The Arrow by James Tin and the fourth. And this follows a school in Milwaukee who are going about their day when somehow the whole school, all the teachers, all the faculty, all the students get transported to a different universe. It's kind of like a primordial wilderness and they've got to survive with monsters and it's crazy. Um, I really, really enjoyed this. The artwork was really, really cool. I don't think it's as detailed as I normally like it, but it was bright and it was unique and it was different. I think the story is just going to get better and better as the series goes on. I've only got the first volume and I really, really enjoyed it. I feel like it's definitely going to be a new favorite graphic novel series for me. It had monsters, it had mystery, it was sci-fi. Like what more could I have asked for? The plot does push more on the adult side of graphic novels. It had just the right amount of gore and eerie atmosphere, although the pacing was off at times, which did throw me from the story a little bit. And the characters were really good, but there were a lot of characters, don't get me wrong. It was really diverse and I love that, but there were a lot of characters to kind of keep up with. And I felt like I didn't know enough about the characters, which I hope they improve on in the next volume. But I think this one has definitely piqued my interest and I definitely will be getting my hands on future volumes and seeing what I think. My next four star read was one I had been really, really looking forward to, and that is The Steel Prince Volume 1 by V.E. Schwab. And I was so, so excited to get my hands on this one. Obviously, I've read the Shades of Magic trilogy and loved it. It's one of my favorite. And this one definitely did not disappoint. This follows King Maxim before he was king, and he was just a kind of 
adventurous prince. So this kind of follows King Nicol when he had kind of discovered that his son was fixated on the other London. And obviously in this world, if you have not read the Shades of Magic series, there is four Londons, red, white, grey and black. And his dad doesn't really appreciate that. So he kind of sends him away on a dangerous military excursion to kind of get his son to settle down and focus his attention on where it needs to be. Maxim's destination is Verose, which is known as the Blood Coast. And it is run by this infamous pirate queen named Arissa. And I guess it goes from there of Prince Maxim kind of wanting to take over Verose because it's under the Moresh Empire and you know, the Pirate Queen's a little bit dangerous. So really, really enjoyed this. I thought it was amazing. I thought the plot was great. I thought the characters were great. The art style's not my favorite. It's a bit rough for me, but I feel like it'll grow on me eventually. And I guess what I'm really excited about this one is to learn more about King Maxim prior to him being king. So really enjoyable. Excited to see what mischief he can get up to. Okay, guys, moving on to my 4.5 star read of the month, and it is Escaping from Houdini by Kerry Maniscalco. This is the third book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series, and I love this. This is my audiobook of the month as usual. I read an audiobook every month, and I've been loving this series on audiobook. So I can't really tell you much about it. Obviously, it's the third book in a series, but the Stalking Jack the Ripper book follows Audrey Rowe, who doesn't want to kind of be in society and be what they expect of her. Obviously, she's in the 1800s, so she's expected to be a wife and a mother, and she wants to be a forensic scientist, and she wants to work out how people died and why they died and solve murders, and that's what she's interested in, and... The stories follow on from there. Obviously, this is going on from there where, let's just say she's on a cruise ship and people get murdered. So that's where this is at. I think the audiobook for this is amazing. I think the writing for this is amazing. The characters are my absolute favorite part of the novel. I love Audrey Rose. I love Thomas. Their dynamic is probably my favorite. The characters have an amazing dynamic together and it's a lot of banter and it's just really, really funny to read. It has murder. It has mystery. It has romance. It has magic. I feel like Carrie's writing in these novels keep getting better and better and I really enjoy following, seeing her progression through these books. I do think Escaping from Houdini was a lot more disjointed than the others. All the books follow sort of the same formula and it's a murder mystery. The formula is mostly always the same. However, this was a little bit more disjointed for my taste. They were throwing in a lot more different characters and it was kind of taking away from the main characters and I didn't love the extra twists they threw in there. What I do love about Audrey Rose is that she's kind of breaking out of society and she doesn't want to be what society wants her to be and I love that and I just love an independent woman just doing her own thing. It's just a really, really good series and I can't wait to see what happens in Capturing the Devil which comes out later this year. The next book I want to talk to you about is my five star read of the month and I'm so, so excited to tell you that it is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This is the first book in the King Killer Chronicles and oh, it was so good. This is a chunker. This is 662 pages. It's a massive book. It follows our main character, Kavoth, who is telling his story in a tavern to a chronicler. I don't know how to explain the synopsis of this story. It's really, really hard to explain. Kavoth is kind of a really, really magically gifted person. He kind of grows to be a notorious person and everyone's kind of looking for them. Everyone either wants to hurt him or know what happened to him or know his story. And this chronicler finds him and stops to tell his story. And it's a really, really slow burn. And without spoiling anything, the only way I can explain this is that it's a story of his life up to a certain age and it goes on from there. I don't want to spoil anything because I think you should just read it. If you like high fantasy, read it. If you like magic, if you like slow burn stories, I feel like this one's for you because it is a really slow burn. And I feel like that'll either, you'll either love it or you'll hate the slowness of it. And I was just so immersed in the story. It took me about 25 days to read, but I didn't want to rush it because high fantasy, you've got to really, really focus. And I did focus and I loved it. I loved it so much. I thought it was written beautifully. I thought it was so detailed, but it didn't go overboard. It told a story of Kavoth. You really connected to the character. And uh, I don't I don't even know. I can't even get into words how much I enjoyed this book. The writing was good, the characters were good, but the story was good, everything was good, and I I just fell in love with the story and I can't wait to read the next one. But the issue is the third book, I believe, is not out yet. He's still writing it and like I'm nervous to go on and get to that one and then need the third one, which doesn't currently exist. Really, really good, amazing, can't recommend enough. 
honestly. Those are the books that I read for my owls in April. So all in all, I ended up finishing five reading challenges. I finished Charms, which was The Name of the Wind, Herbology, which was The Woods Volume 1, Potions, which was Escaping from Houdini, Transfiguration, which was Shades of Magic, and Care of Magical Creatures was the Darkest Part of the Forest. So I ended up finishing five owls and, and finishing the four owls that I need to be a magizoologist in the notes. I would have liked to get through a few more books, but I ended up getting through The Name of the Wind, which I think in itself is an achievement. Uh, but that is it for me today, guys. If you like this video, please give a big thumbs up, subscribe, like, see more, and have not already, and chat to me down in the comments. Let me know what you read for the month of April, or let me know how you went with your owls if you joined in with that amazing readathon hosted by G from Book Roast. I adore joining in, I always adore joining in, but I guess this month I've been a little bit in a creativity slump, I guess. I didn't finish my vlogs, I do have footage for them, but it just wasn't what I wanted and it wasn't turning out the way I wanted and I just got really slack to film I guess and I've been continuing that this month so I've missed a few weeks so far but today I'm getting back into it and hopefully bringing you guys some content really soon and content that you'll enjoy watching. But that's it for me for now. I make videos every Monday and Thursday and I'll see you in a new one. Bye!